Is it on? Well, good morning, everyone. And everybody out in, I have to always remember to look at the cameras in the back. Uh, welcome everyone at home that's joining in today. Uh, welcome to the house of the Lord. Uh, we come here for, you know, to praise uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus. We come here to renew our, keep our relationships going and seeing what's, what's the latest going on in each other's lives. There's a multiple reasons why we come to church, but it's generally always centered around our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, any uh, behavioral bingo? Anybody? Oh, Sherry's got one. Anybody? Yeah. Hey, well, hey, we got a streak going here. I want you to know. Anybody out there on Zoom? All right. Way to go, Sherry. Uh, remember, the uh, bingo cards are out there on the table, or you can get them online. So uh, I think I'm going to tell my wife we're going to pick up a couple today, and we're going to see if we can get a bingo. She's asked me about it. So on the, my refrigerator is going to have to be prepared for two of them this week. Um, don't forget uh, grateful news or uh, prayer concerns. Make sure you let Scott know sometime during the end of the week. I don't know why I say Thursday because uh, we get them right up till Sunday morning. And uh, that's pretty normal, but that's, that's good. We don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, we have a lot. Uh, Lila is going to bring us our prayer concerns here shortly. And we have a lot of folks to raise up in our prayer concerns. In case uh, anybody doesn't know, um, Steve Beasy is in the hospital. He's still in the hospital as far as I know. I haven't seen anything different. So just so you know, uh, our brother Beasy is in the hospital. Uh, went in there went in under emergency conditions. So, but we haven't heard any updates uh, since then. Um, next Sunday is communion and sacrament Sunday, you know, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, Crafty Ladies is Tuesday, August 8th. That's coming up pretty quick too, 10 o'clock here in the church, first room on the right. So please join. Oh, and associated with that, you know, we've been doing the hand tracings. Uh, for those at home, uh, if you still want to do that and you haven't, please uh, do that and put your name on it and send them to Carol. Uh, but this is the last day I'm announcing it from up here. So, uh, and then Carol will take it from there. So, but please do. We've got a lot of hands already. But if there's anybody else that would like to be added to that, please sure make sure that you do that. Uh, potluck is coming up August 13th as well. So I invite everyone who can come to come. And well, hello. Good to see you here today, both of you. All right. Um, but potluck, uh, you know, there's two things. Uh, you've heard me say this many times that we enjoy doing, and that's chatting and eating. So please come along and chat with us and eat with us. And those of you at home, uh, have a good dinner at home, too, <laughs> a lunch at home, too. I wish we all could be together. Um, we have a game day scheduled for Saturday. August 19th, that's a Saturday afternoon from about two to four. So if anybody would like to come for our game day and uh, Kim and uh, Scott came up with the idea. I think it's a great idea. I, we, I love to play games. And uh, so they're, they're hosting this and we're gonna do it back in the fellowship hall. So if you can come on August um, 19th, somewhere around two to four, please come, uh, bring, my notes say that, uh, you know, bring a snack that you would like to share and bring something to drink. And if you have games or whatever you would like to bring, 
Um, and now somebody mentioned there's a game that you have that others want to try. So beer. Um, but yeah, come and enjoy. We'll have a good time. It's it, we got a game day on August 19th. Don't forget we have Bible class uh, uh, on tomorrow, Monday, 7 p.m. Uh, all of these we can join on our Zoom link, uh, just like we join here in the service. Uh, theology class is on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. And then junior high, senior high, Wednesday, 7 p.m. And with that, I think that's it. So I will ask Lila to come up and bring us our prayer concerns for today. Let us pray. Love and creator, today we come with gratitude for blessings that have been received by some of the people that we've been carrying on our hearts. Gary E. is glad to be able to breathe easier after having a treatment. Kim J. has received relief from back pain after she's had a steroid shot. We rejoice that Wayne T. has recovered enough that he's been able to go home this week after being in the hospital for an extended care. We give thanks for how he and Lisa have been blessed during this time, but there is still much ahead of them. There are still procedures that are happening this week, and this is going to go on for the long haul. So we, Lord, we seek your continued watch care for both of them during this period. Give them the strength and the patience for the long haul as they proceed through his recovery. We also lift up Jim W. and Patty W. to you. Jim is still losing blood. We pray that the doctors are going to be able to discern where this is coming from and to get it stopped because he cannot go on with the other treatments that he needs until they can get it stopped and get his blood build up. So we pray for a blessing in that way, if at all possible. Bring comfort and peace to both Jim and Patty as they travel this difficult journey together. Our love and support surround them. Lord, we lift up Steve V's B because we know he has been hospitalized in an emergency situation. We pray that your love and your compassion will surround his family and the doctors as they treat him in whatever way that he needs. We lift up Gary G and his family. Gary is in ICU with congestive heart failure. We also lift up the family of Tyra R, whose father passed away recently. Encircle them with peace and comfort that only you can provide at a time like this. May the memory of his life live on in their hearts, even though he is not with them physically. We also lift up Rosa V, who is also suffering from back problems. Lord, we know there are many people throughout the world who are suffering, and we lift up all of your creation, knowing that you know their needs. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name is Patty Walker, and I welcome you here today to our many places of worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May this coming hour be a blessing to you and allow you to search your heart for what you need the most. Let us now remain seated as we sing hymn number 42 as the wind song through the trees, followed by the call to worship.
How can we, one small group, be fully open to the wonder of a new creation within our gathering? We can see God creating a living wholeness, vibrant with joy, energized with discussions of hope and new visions. We can be open to learning through disagreements, open to seeing fresh possibilities. Let us sense the blessings that come from birthing new directions. May our fears transform into the hard work of building, letting our hearts move our hands to embrace diversity and plans that free our dreams into reality. And now, please sit back and listen our, to our ministry of music, Hesu, Hesu, fill us with your love. And this will be followed by the prayer of invitation by Jim. Yes, sacred community, we ask that your spirit will flow freely in all of our diversity and even our diverse vocations, and let this church family worship you. Let us merge our souls under your smile and in your hand. Be felt with each of us, and, and with each of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28. Also, the Spirit helps us. We are very weak, but the Spirit helps us with our weakness. We don't know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself speaks to God for us. He begs God for us, speaking to him with feelings too deep for words. God already knows our deepest thoughts, and he understands what the Spirit is saying, because the Spirit speaks for his people in the way that agrees with what God wants. We know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love him. These are the people God chose, because that was his plan. And now let us remain seated as we sing our hymn of healing and wholeness, Come Now You Hungry, followed by today's message by Earl. Don't you love hearing the voice of young ones? You know, I can't begin to tell you how many congregations I have been in over the years. And uh, that's a sound in many cases we don't often hear. So me for one, I rejoice on hearing his voice because um, youth, is important to not only our congregation, but to our church. So uh, yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Oh, by the way, since I brought this up, if you know of anybody that you would like to bring to church, that has kids, they're, they're, you know, I find that kids are a good way to get parents into church also. But Feel free to do that. We would love, love uh, to have uh, more youth in our congregation. I love all of us older people too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, who's old? That's a good question, Jim. That's a good question. Um, and you know, and uh, we are working uh, on those those uh, areas. Uh, of trying to get some uh, young people that have children into our congregation. So we, we are trying to move that direction. Uh, today, uh, the sermon is focused on Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 26, and, read, and, and Patty read the first uh, couple of verses, uh, but I'm also going to expand further. The, uh, the sermon helps take it all the way to 39 and I don't blame you Patty for not trying to read all 39 uh, but I am going to lightly cover them uh, because they are important and sometimes this is a a um, controversial section of scriptures you might say because it does talk about uh, you know predestination and and uh, some people are really turned on off on that because some think, well, shoot, why should I bother 
going to church if everybody's going to be saved. I'm going to be saved, so why should I go to church? I've heard this countless times. Then on the other hand, I've heard a lot of folks who don't go to church, <laughs> and they say, well, I have nothing to worry about. Whatever I'm doing, I can do some more. And, and I kind of got, like, oh, really? But we are predestined. And God did this as we're going to, I'm going to go over this with you a long time ago. But it's, it's something that he wants us. He wants us to join him. But the problem is only the blameless can go to the father. So hint, where does his son come into play? so that we can become and get through the son to the father blameless so it's all good news but it all comes down to whose choice it is right it's our choice god gave us this thing called free agency and he wants us he wants us to come to him but it's a choice it's a choice. Patty started off talking about spirit. I love the spirit. Y'all got to love spirit too. You know, the spirit never leaves us alone. We are never alone. God never abandons us. And again, I, I know a lot of people that probably aren't like any of us who the only time they pray is when they have difficulties in their life you know we can also pray and give thanks for all the good things we have in our life too but sometimes we forget about that sometimes we forget about that and then when we do have difficulties in our lives sometimes we don't know how to express ourselves but god bless the holy spirit the scriptures tell us that the Holy Spirit will intercede for us to the Father in a way that we can't communicate. There is a tie that's unbelievable between the Father and Christ and the Holy Spirit. So when we can't, the Holy Spirit will. The scriptures call it the grumblings. And basically what they're what he's trying to describe is it's beyond us. But there is a link between the Father and Christ and the Holy Spirit where there's clear understanding. Plus, the scripture also tells us that Jesus knows and God, the Father knows everything anyway. But that's good. We have someone that will intercede to the Father, to Christ on our behalf. According to the will of God, and we hear that, and it was read today by Patty, the Spirit's intercession is perfect. I don't know about y'all, but I've never said a perfect prayer. I wouldn't even know what that is. But the Spirit's intercession is perfect. The Spirit searches the hearts of those he helps. Now think about that. Searches where? The thought, you know, the heart. When Jesus appears in the clouds someday, we don't know when that's going to be, and he's going to look down and look through our minds into what? Our hearts. It's it, what's in here is critically important to us. And there's no fool in him. Uh, the Spirit is able to guide our prayers. He's there. He's a helper. You ever heard people describe the Holy Spirit as the helper? He is our helper. And that's why, and that helper is always there. We can't, we couldn't get rid of him if we wanted to. Now, we might be able to push him away, but does he ever leave? No. Will he come back closer to us? Yes. Yes, yeah, uh, I can't imagine life without the Holy Spirit in our lives. 
in my personal life. Uh, Patty mentioned that all things work together for good to those who love God. Loving God is very important to us. Have you ever, well, I'll just give you my personal experience. Some of you might be able to relate. But there have been times in my life where it's like, how am I going to meet that whatever obligation shows up in my mailbox, right? How am I going to do that? And just when I think there, I'm in trouble, some refund shows up. Anybody ever had that happen? Well, you don't have, that's rhetorical. But it's happened to me. It's amazing. God is always listening to us. And the times that we say, well, God wouldn't care. Guess who's interceding for us? The Holy Spirit. I think it's amazing. We probably, all of us had little miracles in our lives that we probably don't even recognize. We probably don't even recognize. If you're like, <laughs> like, uh, I have been and sometimes still am. I try to define on what it is I want God to deliver. And what I miss out on is the delivery. Because he knows better what Earl needs in his life than Earl knows what Earl thinks he needs in his life. But I'm sure none of the rest of us have ever gone through that. You know, but it's nice to know that the Holy Spirit will do that for us. You know, some people try to place limits on God. And scriptures tell us that God can work all things. Not just some things, but all things. He may not work them in the pattern that we think he ought to but that's where we need to learn to be open to the nudgings, to the, the whispers in our ears and so on. Um, so that when he's telling or showing or giving or trying to speak to us, we are there. We are there. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of suffering going on around the world. Uh, there's suffering going on that I don't think any of us, either at home or here in the congregation, have ever suffered. And I'm talking about real, difficult, life-threatening suffering. And it amazes me how the things that I've read and accounts that I've seen, and you too probably, where people will not give up Christ. And then they're gone in this form. I'm trying to be as gentle with this as I can. But they're, you know, they're the people that are trying to get them to give up Christ in their life. But the thing that keeps them hanging on is they know that really that just becomes the beginning of their life. Because if we hang on to Christ, Christ will hang on to us. He will hang on to us. There is a life after this form. There is a life after this throne or this form that we probably cannot comprehend how good that life is. The one thing I've learned in my life is God often doesn't see us as we see us. You know, what is important to us may not necessarily be important to him. But what is, I know is important to him is our spirit. And when the Holy Spirit works with our spirits, my goodness, hang on. There's no telling what we can do, what we can achieve, 
who we can approach, the ministry we can provide, and that goes for all of us. Everybody we come in contact with in our daily lives is an opportunity for us to minister. But then in verse 29 of this section, it talks about God predestined us to conform to the image of Christ. And in Ephesians 1, 4, 5, this is what we're told. Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that goes way back, right? Way back. That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption of himself as sons, and I also put, and daughters, through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. From the very beginning, God wants us to join him. We are predestined for that. You know, I hear some, I've, I've been told, I've heard this many times. I've had people tell me, why didn't God just, serve, you know, save everyone? Well, sometimes I wonder if that's the real question. Sometimes the, the question that goes to my, God, my mind is, why should God save any of us? I'll tell you why. He loves us. He loves us. But, it's, you know, it tells us that we, to go get to the Father, we need to go through the Son. So that we can be blameless. Does that mean we don't make mistakes? Oh, yeah. Does that mean we don't sin? Oh, uh, no. It doesn't. Guilty. But I recognize it. And I know I can go to the Father and ask for forgiveness. And when my time comes, and all of our time comes, and we're poofed out of here, whenever that day comes, Our book will never be open. Why? Because Jesus took on all of our sins. Therefore, we will see the Father. And that's what we're all striving for. In 1 Timothy 2, uh, verse 3 and 4, he says, This is good and pleases God, our Savior. God wants everyone to be saved and fully understand the truth. And then I can read from 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some counts slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Boy. Isn't it nice to have a patient and loving heavenly father? Isn't it wonderful that he gave his son for us? To take on our sins. And to arise and defeat death. That's where life begins. You know, and uh, when you think about eternity, anybody know how big eternity is? If you do, I'd like to know, because I can't wrap my head around it. But I do know, like, I, I, I do imagine that life in this form is about, see my fingers, you see any gaps in there? Compared to eternity, that's how long we are in this form. We'll live eternity in our new and improved, First Thessalonians tells us this, our new and improved bodies. No pain, no arthritis, 
Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. There's a lot of us in here think that would be great to live eternity. You know, scriptures tell us that uh, when the time comes and this earth goes away and the stars and God creates the new earth and the heavens, new Jerusalem's going to come down. And, and in our figures, new Jerusalem's going to be 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles that way, and 1,500 miles that way. Pretty big city, if you ask me. And I've always imagined I'll probably be get, you know, Christ tells the disciples that there are many mansions, rooms, and, you know, the Father's mansion, right? My room will be 1,499 miles up. And I think, oh, gosh, how am I going to get to my apartment? But then Christ tells us that when we have our new and improved bodies, we're going to be able to do the things that he does. And he can walk through walls, right? Walk through doors. Appear and, and move from one place to another in an instant. I guess I won't have any problems getting to a 1,499th mile floor. Just blink my eyes or however it's done. And we'll be there. Isn't that amazing? I can see us when the time comes and we're in heaven and and we we and we're invited on a tour together, walking through, and everybody, angels are coming by picking up our jaws because we're trying to comprehend everything that we see. I know it sounds funny, but just imagine. What a day that will be. God does this with our cooperation. Now, remember, it's a choice. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin are death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, he must love us. It's just all there is to us. Scriptures that tell us about our choice. John 3, 16. Anybody ever heard that one? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have eternal life. Romans 9, or Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It doesn't say maybe. It says you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. The scriptures are full of other verses that attest to this same theme. Those are just a three. Obviously, I don't have time to go through them all. But isn't that wonderful news? So Jesus might be the firstborn amongst us, his brethren brothers and sisters. To me, I, I'm looking forward to the day. He adopts us into his family. Romans 8, 15 says, the spirit that we receive is not a spirit that makes us slaves again and causes us to fear. The spirit that we have makes us God's children, chosen children. And with that spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. Heard that last week. Canoni told us that very verse, read that to us. God is for us. He is for us. 
He is not against us. He is for us. And if God is for us, then who can be against us? That's really the question. And my answer to that, nobody. Nobody. Jesus is our advocate to the Father. The Holy Spirit will take our prayers to the Father. Jesus is our advocate to the Father. We are more than conquerors. And there's four things I'd like you to consider. One says, he, she overcomes with a greater power, the power of Jesus. He, she overcomes with greater motive, the glory of Jesus. He, she overcomes with a greater victory, losing nothing, even in battle. And the last one, he, she overcomes with greater love, conquering our enemies with love. I have, in my time, been dressed up and down, if you know what that means, <laughs> where somebody's mad at you and they're just dressing you up and down. And I can remember going back to what scriptures tell us about this. And I listen, and then I would, my response would be, even though the things you said are very hurtful, I want you to know I love you. And you know, without fail, every time I've taken that approach, tears start to come from the person who is dressing me up and down. And you can see them coming off of their emotional high. And then they go into, I'm sorry. Try it sometime. Scriptures tell us it'll work. From my experience, it's never let me down. Sometimes where we gotta go where we haven't gone before, right? When I, when I first uh, started dating Vilma, her culture, her culture suggested that if one does this, zing, the other one comes back and zing, and then the other one comes back and zing, and they, the zings just keep piling up. And then the first thing you know, somebody says something they can't take back. And that happened to Velma and I. And then she, and her response to me is, because I wouldn't, I call it play the game. She says, but don't you love me? I said, it's because I do love you. I won't let my emotions put me in a place that something is said out of my mouth that I can't take back. She understands that now. She didn't understand that back then because that was something new. But I, I say, try it. I think you will be surprised the power of God's love. If we have the peace that Christ gives us, not the world, that Christ gives us in our life, it's amazing what can happen and the reactions that we'll get from others who are new and haven't been introduced to these type of concepts. The things the scriptures say will work, but sometimes we just got to venture out and try it. Been there. The power of love is extraordinary. So I'm going to quote, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to stop here at this point with this. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't care what you're faced with or who is throwing what at you. Nothing can come between us and separate us from God if we keep love forefront in our hearts.
God bless y'all. Love y'all. And I hope y'all have a blessed. And, and for all you Cole family, have a wonderful trip. They're going to be with us for four Sundays. But we will miss you. And But have a wonderful time. Have a wonderful time. God bless you all. Are these Bibles shown in Jewish law scripture reading? It's taken from the book of Psalms. The Psalms is a collection of 150 songs of praise, prayer, and spiritual form, poems. All are parts of the book, may have been, uh, may have served as a hymn book, just like ours, or a prayer book in the synagogue as far back as possibly 960 BCE. And that BCE, in case anybody's not familiar with it, it refers to before the common error. I could hear it. I mean, um, before the common era. And we used to say BC before Christ or AD after Christ. But now this term is used for religious neutrality and has become an international standard. So the book of Psalms is derived from various translated words that basically mean musical praise, Psalms, songs. The people probably sang their praises in the synagogues just as we sing from our hymnals. The headings of many psalms associate them with particular individuals, especially David. I always thought David wrote all the psalms, but um, it, it implies that he's the author. But if it may say of David or inspired by David or in memory of David, um, he didn't necessarily write all of them. I hope you found this interesting. I did. Um, now today's scripture reading. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Today, like the saints of so long ago, we sing our praises and we give our, we pray our praises to our creator. We give of our monetary assets as a way of expressing our love and gratefulness for all of life's rich blessings. We give back just a small portion of all the many blessings we've received in our lives. <clears throat> and now you have an opportunity to do that with your monetary gifts. So will our ushers please come forward. Please pray with me. Creator, our brothers and sisters, love you and your teachings. And I give thanks for their love, for their presence in my life, and the fact that this gathering would be lacking if even one of them were not here today. Bless those that give this day, and bless too those that cannot give, but show their love for you in so many other ways each day. Amen. The ushers will now wait on you.
we will now stand and sing All Are Called, number 606. Our prayer for peace today is also the benediction. So would you all please pray with me? God of our struggles, we have hearts that are heavy for the children who go without food every day. We hear the deafening silence of those voices who yearn to be heard and relieved of their suffering. We also hear the cries for peace and justice as all creation groans with the heaviness of greeting careless consumption of valuable resources. We long for peace, your peace. God of understanding, we grieve because we cannot meet everyone's need or resolve every injustice in this world. We, keep for, we weep for those who have lost their way and hold close the ones who are starving for knowledge of your love and grace. God of compassion, today we feel the warm embrace of your spirit as we let down our walls of doubt, pride, and guilt, as we become more attentive to the gentleness of the touch of divine grace through your spirit, we seek sacramental vision so that we will see others with new insight as was taught by your son, Jesus, the peaceful one. May we come to know your loving nature and that you are also a God of miracles and the warm center of our being. When we choose to live according to your spirit and set our minds and hearts on things of the spirit, our eyes and our ears will become attuned to the sacredness in our sisters and brothers. The spaciousness within your welcome continues to expand and gives hope for the unfolding future. O oh, searcher of our hearts, may we come to realize that the sacredness that dwells within the very nature of who you are also dwells within each of us the same and give us life within you. May we go into the world this day and be the very breath of your peace. 
We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, the peaceful one. Amen. And now I send you forth with these words from Doctrine and Covenants 163, verse 11a. May we answer the call to be that community and offer the ministry of Jesus Christ to our friends and our neighbors, to the poor and the homeless, to the immigrant and the refugee. We go commissioned to serve. Go in peace. And now for those on Zoom, would you please unmute yourselves and let us all share together. Have a great week. Hi, Patty. Hey, hey everybody. How are y'all doing? Except for lack of sleep, pretty good. Oh, lack of sleep. Why do you have lack of sleep? I have no idea. It's been a problem. <laughs> Uh-oh. I, I intended to come, but when it was time to get up and get a shower, I'd only had four hours. So I said, okay, Zoom it is. And Scott said he didn't sleep either. So. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry to hear that. So Jim's doing? He's doing okay. Um, just a lot, lot of issues going on with his health. Yeah. Well, we're praying for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How are you, Cindy? Uh, hi, good morning. Good I'm morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you all. I know, you too. I was just going to say to Kim, I have the same problem sometimes. Can't uh -huh. sleep. Mm, yeah, it's an issue. Hey, Carol, I actually got David's handprint and then we didn't make it today. You can't you're, hear you, Carol. Yeah, you're muted. Can I ask what the handprint is for? The communion it's, tablecloth. Yeah. There was so, an old there was an old one and it didn't have a lot of the new people on it. So it's just like a someone's gonna sew them onto it or or paint? Paint it on? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they're painting them. Yeah. Oh. I know that's what they did the with the first cloth. I got the impression oh. the first cloth people just did hand prints, but that was when everybody was physically present. Right, right. Yeah, that's been quite a few years ago that we did that one. I think that was before our time. I'm not sure. Yeah, I know it's been a while. <laughs> but we don't have names, just handprints, right? Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I'm not sure. Carol would have to explain it. And she's still muted. Yeah, I think they're. Oh, oh nope. Do you all have a microphone, Carol, Earl? Oh, they're they're trying to talk to us, but they're muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says it's Miranda. There we there go. There we got it. Mm -hmm. All right. We to have a smart one here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was saying, Carol, that I finally got David's handprint, but then we didn't make it today. What? I finally got David's handprint, and then we didn't make it today because we didn't get any sleep. Oh, fantastic. They didn't, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. So. Okay, you so, can take a picture of it and message it to me. Email uh, it to You me. want that or do you want me to scan it and email it? Do you want her to scan it? And show us email. That's, that's better. Okay. Well, it's great seeing you all today. Same here. Thanks for the message, Earl. Oh, so, I, I'm a mess and Scott's not here anymore, but... Uh, <laughs> Can you hear me? Please, Carol? A little bit. Carol. Yes. Are you talk? Are you talking to me, Carol White? Yes. Yes. Okay. What? What? What the is Gary, the Gary that was on the prayer list? Is yeah, our yes. Gary? Oh, I was wondering. I thought it might be. Yeah. They're going to turn off the machines today. Oh, okay. They probably have at 11. Well, they probably have right about now. And 
They're putting them in hospice, but they're keeping them right there at the hospice. They're not going to um, move. Okay. When do you know? Well, you hey, people all have a good on. week. I'm going to sign off, and I'll catch you next week. Okay, okay. Patrick. Take care. Love you okay. guys. Okay. Bye take bye. care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. It's Thank you.